It's the new year, so it means out with the old and we bring in the new. <laughs> Nothing like a finished object to start the year. Here's what's coming up. Again, it's Stuart here from my shop, The Wool Patch, a yarn and fabric haberdashery shop in Long Melford, Suffolk, UK. Happy New Year to you, 2022. How did that happen? <laughs> Trust you all had a good Christmas or holiday season. And here we are in January. It's dark, it's cold. But I'm here to keep you company for half an hour and throughout the month too. So what are we going to talk about first? Well, it's got to be this, isn't it? The first finished object from me for 2022. It's my zipper cardigan called Intersections by Rosso Cardinale. Take a look. I started this in 2020 when I was getting rid of all the drops yarn because of Brexit. I couldn't manage to stock it because they upped the minimum order. So I had to get rid of the yarn. So I thought, well, I'll treat myself to some yarn too before I got rid of it all. So it was done with Drops Nepal, which is an Aran weight yarn done on five mil needles. And Drops Nepal is made up of 65% wool and 35% alpaca. And it's wonderfully soft. I have this against my skin and it's just so nice, not itchy at all. And it was lovely to knit with, but it was a long knit. Started way back in lockdown. <laughs> I have stuck to the pattern all the way up to here on this blue. But when I did that, I thought, well, there's an awful lot of neck so it ended with a really open neck and I thought it's a bit too low for my liking so I went off piste as we often do many of you I know adapt patterns as you go along Fizz is doing one as we speak and has adapted the sal pattern from the West Yorkshire spinners and is, is adding things herself to fit um, and that's good that's what you do it's it's hard to do I suppose the more experienced knitter you are the, the more easy it is um, so I didn't really know what I was going to do so I thought well I'll just carry on the decreases and add bits, but taking the similar style of what you could see in the the uh, yoke here. So I took that blue idea of the pyramids upside down or mountains, whichever way you look at it, <laughs> and I added the blue there till I got to my neck. Um, uh, um, and my collar, I went up and down the, on the inside, so it's wonderfully lined too and thick and squishy, but I'm thrilled with it. Um, and I think I'm even more excited and proud about it because of making it fit to what I wanted, uh, knowing that oh, I wasn't truly happy with it ending there and whether I would have worn it and, and that extra effort of working out the decreases and then doing the steak, putting in the zip. It was a wonderful learning experience. And I've now got a garment I really, really like. But other than that, it is the whole pattern. So if you like that and you like the steak and you like how it, where it would have fitted, where it would have ended as a boat neck, then go for it. 
um, you can find it by uh, uh, searching uh, Instagram and looking for Rosso Cardinale uh, uh, or going on uh, Ravelry and having a look but there we are what a way to start 2022 with my finished pattern Intersections by Rosso Cardinale <laughs> I put it on Peggy. How good does that look? <laughs> right. So I thought I'd like to uh, spend this next section uh, of the show talking to you about the shop. I wanted to get your opinions on something. I, I've been struggling with this um, over Christmas and I thought, yes, I need to ask my YouTube audience because they will let me know. Um, remember I said on the last video when um, I'm on my own most of the time and so sometimes when I'm choosing fabrics uh, I, I go overboard whereas if you were in a team of people someone might go oh I'm not too sure about that and you'd go oh yeah yeah you're right. Um, so you're you're my team. So I would like to talk to you about paper bags in the shop. When I get deliveries of yarn or deliveries of fabric, I get so many plastic bags, it's unbelievable. Look at this one, for example. Now, this is a posh plastic bag. This is from the West Yorkshire Spinners, and it's lovely. So when I order my wool, it comes in these. I can get five balls of wool in there, and sometimes when I order 10 balls of wool, they come in a bigger pack. Now to me, that's a posh plastic bag. It's almost too posh for a one use plastic bag. I'm throwing away so many of these. Now, if you think I might be ordering yarn, big box of yarn once a month from each company, so if I'm getting 10 of these a month from one company, think about all the other companies I'm getting too. So I was thinking, when you come in as a customer and buy some yarn, how would you feel if I put your yarn in a leftover plastic bag from the wool? Ooh, you brought some uh, Lang Merino, madam. Oh, lovely, yes. Oh, you've bought two crazy Zauber balls, madam. Lovely. And I bug them in there and give it to the customer. Giving another use of that plastic bag that the wool came into to my shop. It, it, I'd like to know your opinion. How would you feel if you were a customer and got that bag? Because there is an element of it feeling a bit like second hand and a bit uh, oh I can't think of the think of the word oh can you help me <laughs> do you, do you understand what I'm saying but there's also a real important issue of giving this one use plastic bag another use. And if you, you, I'm putting your wool in there and you take it home, that's had two uses. That's got to be better than it going straight into landfill. Now, I understand that that now means a customer now has to try and get rid of that. Either way, they're going to chuck it into landfill or I was going to chuck it into landfill. But getting a second use, ideally, the customer will come back with that when they come and buy more wool. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Here are the paper bags. I get them printed with our logo on, which is lovely. They are the craft paper bags. Very good. Get a lot of wool in there. They also make for good project bags. And as I say, I'm not trying to get out because of buying these. 
And ultimately, I will still buy these, but perhaps not as many, because if a tourist comes to, uh, to town and comes to my shop, they probably will want to leave with a nice bag. I would, I think if I was visiting somewhere, I think I would want to leave with a nice bag. Thinking, would I? I think I would because you'd feel quite proud with you walking down the street with all my goodies from the Woolbatch, rather than an old bag, which might say the company's name on, but I have to say most of the bags that come from the companies with yarn on, it doesn't say their name at all. But what do you think? I, I know I'm only a little person uh, trying to make uh, some impact on the carbon footprint and, and, and our planet and it's going to be minuscule my impact but does that that idea of reusing it again as a customer carrier bag is 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 giving that a second use good or not it's just I've got so many of these and I just feel when I get a delivery and you're chucking that out and you just think, oh my God, that wool sat in there for what? A month probably in, in the West Yorkshire Spinners warehouse. And I'm now just chucking it again. And I, I know we just, we can't go on doing stuff like that, can we? So let me know what you think in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. Right, yes, it's that time again. Guess the year of the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you follow the vlog, you'll recognize the pattern, the good old Harry Styles cardigan. Oh, I love knitting it. And the eagle eyed viewers of you will have noticed it right at the beginning when I was wearing it on the intro. So guess the year. I know the year, so I'm not giving any clues. And can you remember? <laughs> Um, when I made all the, the, the squares, sewed them uh, in, in the columns, the original is huge. So I cut some out, didn't I? And uh, my version was a bomber jacket version. So I'll let you think about that for the rest of the show. What is the year of the Harry Styles card game? Oh, it was a craze and a half. So 2022, what goals have you got? What resolutions have you got? Are you a resolution person? I was watching Chip. <gasps> have you seen his new channel? <sighs> the Quilt Stream. Uh, Chip is doing live streams Monday and Friday. Sometimes they change days, but more often than not, it's Monday and Friday. Talking about sewing, doing sewing, sewing demonstrations and it's all live, it's wonderful. So you can actually all go and watch, all chat live in the on the YouTube chat and watch him and join him. It's absolutely brilliant. But as I was watching Chip last week, he was saying he doesn't have resolutions, he has goals. Well, I never thought of it like that. I, I have resolutions, but actually they are goals. So let's, let's talk about it from a, a goal point of view, because it's, it's wonderfully positive. What are you going to try and achieve? And I thought, uh, certainly from my point of view in the shop here, let's really attack this year and, and uh, for, for, for all its vim and vigor and, and get things done. And I know many of you have got huge stashes of yarn and huge stashes of fabric. And sometimes you have goals of, right, I'm gonna use moustache. I'm not gonna buy anything, I'm gonna use moustache. 
Well, we're going to go one further than that. Yes, you're going to use your stash, but the goal I would like to set you, if you want to join in with me, is to go to that top shelf where that special fat quarter set is sat. Mm, yeah, looking at you, you at the back there. <laughs> or that special layer cake. Mm, yeah, that, that brightly coloured one that you're saving for a very special project. But sadly, that special project never comes along. So it's just sat there. It seems such a shame that that beautiful, most favourite layer cake or indie dyed yarn wool is just sat there. So it's the year of getting up, reaching, taking it off the shelf and making something. Yeah, you are going to break into it. <laughs> You're saying this is your fat quarter set that's been sat there and you just love it. But you never rightly find a project. That project is never going to come along because it it's just takes too much to commit to. So I'm telling you now, do it. Right, take it off and, and find a project. Doesn't matter how special that project is. It could just be a simple half square triangle. The point is, let's use the fabric and let it sing to whoever sees it. Get it out there. Look at this layer cake. This is a new one uh, from uh, Janet Clare Botanicals. Yes, we did it on the last vlog. It's fabulous. Get your layer cake that you absolutely adore and we're going to make a project with it. And it might even simply, if you just don't know what project to do, then just sew the 10 squares together, the 10 inch squares, and just show off the fabric. Let it breathe, let it see. That indie dyed yarn. Well, then let's just do a scarf. Just do it, just however many stitches cast on and just knit. Um, because it seems such a shame that uh, the yarn or the fabric that you spent really good money on, it's just sitting there. Um, and how many years has it actually been sat there? Come on, tell me, whisper it to me. How many years? <gasps> no way. <laughs> it can't be in your stash that long. <gasps> um, uh, we've got um, Sue, um, who often chats in the comments below has joined our Knit and Natter group on a Thursday. Hey, Sue! Um, and I often talk to Sue about her stash um, and how she goes through it and she puts some of it, oh, well, it's all on Ravelry. You can see her stash on Ravelry. Um, and uh, sometimes just can't use enough of it. It's just too much. So it has been giving bits away to people who use it and uh, she's given some to me, which is great. Fizz is another person who has a huge stash, haven't you Fizz, in, in your garage and has done some beautiful things uh, over the last couple of weeks of realising the stash is too much that you're never going, that she's never going to um, knit with it or get the chance to use it. So she's been donating it to people who are going to use it, who are going to say, who, who are big knitters for charity and who will who, who, who just want yarn um, and who will knit with it. So she's given some of her stash away already. Brilliant idea, Fizz, absolutely brilliant. And that's hard because you know at some point you spent your hard-earned money on that because you, you fell in love with the yarn or the colour or the fabric and the print. And it seems such a shame that it's been sat there and it's not been able to be used. But from Fizz's point of view and from Sue's point of view, who's given it away to people, it is going to be used. So Fizz, I know, has already said to me she's committed to, what was it Fizz? Was it one layer cake, one jelly roll? <gasps> so two projects. So what are you going to do? Do you know which fat quarter stash you're going to break into. I know some of you are already going, yep, yeah, I know the one, I know the one. Good, let me know in the comments below. Join in, we'll use the same hashtag, the wool patch. We're not gonna get all complicated and, and bring in another hashtag. Uh, I, I can only cope with that one at the moment. And just, let, let, let's do something together. And, and more importantly, let's enjoy seeing that fabric out and used. Come on, one project, you can do it. Well, or in Fizz's case, two. What are you gonna do? Yarn or fabric, just let me know which pre-cuts you're going to reach up to and taking it out of your stash and to use. And it doesn't have to be a big project, as I say. It could just even just simply be a scarf. The point is to use it and get another finished object for 2022. 
Talking about finished objects, it's that time, yes, where we slow the pace down a little, put our feet up, well, some of you have probably already got your feet up, but will we just enjoy seeing what everyone makes and hopefully be inspired to in this gallery. <laughs> Some amazing work in there as always greatly inspiring and thank you Wayne for some feedback uh, on on the gallery he said oh can you just slow it down a bit a couple of more seconds on each garment that I have done I know the last episode the Christmas one was a bumper one and boy <laughs> there was so many uh, um, uh, finished objects to put in that gallery I'd even doubled the music as it was and I still and there were a couple there where I just felt even myself they were a bit too quick so I have I have slowed it down even more this time for you to enjoy uh, so perhaps you don't have to press pause so much now so I've done that for you Wayne thank you for your feedback now did you spot Aaron's finished make from Fibarsal yes it's the botanical shawl by Westnitz <laughs> It's a fab shawl. It's a really, really simple shawl. So it's great for TV knitting. And it's made with two yarns. You have a solid, and we're using Lang Merino 150, a beautiful four ply, just means 150 meters. And we've coupled it with the good old crazy Zauber balls from Shopple. Look at that. Wonderful. Two, it's a four ply yarn, 
but it's two ply spun. It's spun with two different yarns together. And those two different strands spun together, so that's a four ply, and create for some wonderful, wonderful effects. So you should be able to see in that red stripe there where you get that two-tone effect because of the two strands. The purple might even be even easier to see. There we go. So you can see the two strands there, a purpley mauvey effect. Oh, look at that one there contrasting that one. So you've got a purple and a, and, a, and a red there. The shawl is knitted with a stocking stitch row and your classic garter stitch. There's your stocking stitch rows and that's your classic garter ridge row. And then you just have this wonderful slip stitch up giving you this sort of column effect. Isn't it just fabulous? And it starts in a tiny corner and it's knit sideways until <laughs> until you get to the border there and the beauty of this is you can stop when you like or you can keep going this size which is whew, what's that that's my that's my span <laughs> of my arms and I'm long. I've got a span of about 190 centimetres, nearly two metres. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And it's merino, so it's wonderfully soft. It's a great beginner shawl, or as I said, it's a great TV knitting um, shawl where you, you it doesn't take much concentration. We are doing it as a kit. Yes, so the kit takes oh, five balls of your solid colour, the grey, and two zyber balls. It's a, a lovely shawl, and let's get it round. I'm not, I'm not a shawl wearer, so I never know <laughs> how you're supposed to do these things. What will it be? Border down there. Something like that. You'll have to teach me how you do shawls. <laughs> Don't understand, but it's it's just fabulous. We are doing the kit with the Zyba Ball number 2231 Bunt Metal. You could, of course, buy your own Zyber Balls, and we're going to have loads of Zyber Balls in stock in the next couple of weeks. So you could buy the grey separately, and then choose whatever colour Zyber Ball you like, because they come in loads of colours. You might even go for the current Pantone colour of the year, 2022, very Perry. Ooh, that might be nice. Um, but our kit comes with that colour. So if you like that, then you can pre-order your kit of that colour, those Zyber Balls, and the grey right now by clicking the link in the description below. If not, you can just choose the Zyber Balls that you like and buy the grey separately. Interesting, isn't it? Fabulous to see, especially seeing Aaron's with the turquoise yarn. It's really, really nice. And, and it's a lovely, lovely shawl to knit. So that's the botanical shawl, a new kit to the wool patch. Right, let's go and see what that year is on Guess the Year. Oh, it's such a good pattern and it was such such a fun knit to do I remember it well remember it well so I know the year what year are you guessing have you guessed it right go on shout it out <laughs> 2020 yes it was that year <laughs> the year that we all want to try and forget about it um yes 2020 in the summer he wore it on the one show on bbc and uh, it then just 
sent everyone wild. People were doing it on YouTube and there was one girl who crocheted her own version and she did it from watching him and seeing him with no pattern. That's now in the V&A in London with Harry Styles' original cardigan on show in the V&A. And the designer, J.W. Anderson, was so thrilled that people wanted to knit their own. And this girl who did crochet her own from looking at, from looking at him on the telly, that he then released the pattern for free. And because it was coronavirus time, it was the first lockdown, people wanted things to do and people were, were were making it and I remember making it and then making kits up and then people wanted kits too it was phenomenal so yes 2020 <laughs> what a year eh? so that's guess the year right can I talk to you now about some crochet <laughs> So on the Christmas edition, I told you that my next crochet project was going to be High Wire by Stephanie Erin. It was from the fabulous new book called Murit, uh, the crochet pattern book. And I was going to do it in, again, the Lang, four ply, 150, and again, the Zauber ball, also four ply feel today. And that was going to be it. I mean, look at that, lovely. Mm. But I should have realised Stephanie Aaron is the designer and said on the pattern to use a contrast yarn, well, Stuart, <laughs> there's not a contrast, is it? They're just too similar. Should have realised. So when I started doing the first couple of rounds, I was like, oh, I, 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 I couldn't see which grey I was on and I couldn't see that lovely zigzag pattern appearing. Well, of course, you can't see it appearing because you haven't used the contrast yarn. Oh. So that is scrapped. But look what I have chosen. Zauber ball, brand new. It's an orange Zauber ball with pops of lilac in, pops of yellow in. Oh. And it works a treat. Very, very excited. And this is what it looks like so far. <gasps> Look, if I come back a bit, you might see the contrast even more. And that is it. And because it's top down, we could even try it on. Uh -huh. And that, well, let's put that to the back. That is the neck, that's how it would sit. And I'm just going round and the zigzags will get bigger and bigger as the yoke goes down, as you can see from the picture now. Really, really pleased, but need your help and your feedback. I've already asked Zach from Zach Stout and his podcast. I got some feedback from him. David, if you're watching, David Browning. If you don't know David, do check out his YouTube channel, David Browning, Bearded Yarn Dudes. The, the, he's had stuff in the gallery over the last couple of uh, vlogs, some garments, some shawls. He can crochet anything. So David, I, I'd like your, your feedback if possible and your help and any other crocheters. Um, I am a little bit annoyed that I think I can see the contrast yarn, so the orange. Oh, let's take this off. I can see the contrast yarn being carried underneath, so I don't know whether I'm doing it right. So let's do a big close up right there. Can you see the contrast yarn where my finger is going? And sometimes, look, I can see it there, look, on the bottom. That's, that, that was the, my last round that I've just done. What am I doing wrong? Is there a specific way you should carry that yarn as you crochet? I'm just literally clamping it in behind, but 
I'm thinking, mm, this seems too easy because actually I'm enjoying using two yarns with crochet. It's way easier than using two yarns for knitting. Carrying that yarn at the back, it's just carrying on. And when you push through a loop and pull it up, it just naturally gets caught between. But then is that too easy? <laughs> is that why I can see it through? Because I'm actually not doing it right. Um, and it will be much harder if I do it the right way or not. Let me know, please, David. Um, uh, Zach's already uh, given me his feedback. It'll be interesting to see what you say out there. And any of you who crochet, I know there's many people who have enjoyed the show over the last couple of vlogs because the crochet content has, has gone up. Gordon, Gordon, you're also a, a crochet genius with all your, your, your granny squares that you do and your blankets. Uh, let me know if you uh, are, if you've done colour work before. I've never done it before. In fact, I've never done a crochet garment before. I'm just granny squares and blankets or, or, or beautiful long scarves where you use a ribbing technique, you know, behind the post to give that sort of uh, rib effect, like a fisherman's rib. So uh, I've, I've gone off this at the moment. I've, I've like, I've gone in a huff because I'm like, oh, I love the orange and I love that pop, but like, I'm like, should I be seeing that yarn popping through when it's being carried at the back? So let me know uh, your feedback on that, your thoughts, to put them all in, in the comments uh, and help me get back on track or whether that is just the reality with it. Just, just let me know, because uh, I would like to carry on with that. In the meantime, though, uh, sadly, I think it's going to go in the, uh, the project bag and stay there. I'm getting ready to do a lot more sewing. <gasps> the sewing bee was on over Christmas, so I've got the bug again, and I think the show is coming back in April sometime, so I'm getting very excited. I want to do another shirt, uh, and I'm already talking with Carol about our uh, upcoming shows. Um, and uh, that's exciting. Well, there we are. Boom, that's half an hour gone. Would love your feedback and your thoughts on the, 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 the carrier bag issue. Um, after all, it's, it's all going into the business and working out where we are from a business point of view, because it is just me, so your thoughts are greatly welcome. <laughs> Go looking for that top shelf stash. You, I know where, where you keep those ones, those special ones. Yes, you're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Go and do it straight after this show. Get it off the shelf there and put it to one side. And um, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna do some projects and I can't wait to see what you choose and what projects you do. Um, it's, it's what it's for, isn't it? The fabric and the wool is to see it in the open and made up in something where you can really appreciate it. Remember, you spent some good money on that. It's been lovely chatting to you all and I'll see you again on the next vlog. Bye.